Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm gonna talk about 12 features that are missing from the final release of Android 13. Those features we first saw in the beta versions of Android 13 but unfortunately they didn't make their way to the final release and after that I'm gonna talk about my wish list for Android 13 to improve the user experience. So let's start with the missing features. The first missing feature is the ability to start a split screen from the picture in picture window. For instance, if you have an app running in the foreground with another one running in picture in picture view, a small button appears at the top left corner, tapping on it will split the screen between the two apps. This is not one of the features I was excited about because the added value wasn't that much in my day to day usage. However, if Google is planning to implement this change in the future, I also recommend adding another button to easily revert back to the picture in picture view if needed. The second feature was also part of developer preview one, which is the ability to choose what apps to uninstall for the guest user beforehand. I personally don't use the guest user, but if you do, that would save you from manually reinstalling apps after the initial setup. So I hope to see this feature making its way back to Android 13. Developer preview one also had references to some features that we never experienced in real life, like the media tab to transfer. This feature should allow you to cast media to other devices by tapping your phone on the device, which is similar to Apple's handoff audio to HomePod feature. But unfortunately, we didn't hear anything about it since then, and I'm really excited to see this change in the future. Next, the privacy dashboard in developer preview one was testing the ability to show up to seven days worth of access data, as opposed to the last 24 hours, but till now we didn't see this new feature in action. And the last missing feature from developer preview one is the new multi-user switcher from the lock screen. Mesha Rahman managed to activate this feature and showed us how it looks. From the images, this should make your life easier if you use multiple users on your Android device. Now let's move on to developer preview two. And the first missing feature is the consolidated security and the privacy tile. It used to group the location, camera, and the mic access tiles into one page, in addition to a quick shortcut for the security settings. I'm a big fan of this approach as it makes the quick settings area less cluttered, and I hope to see it back again in the future builds. Number two is the ability to turn off fast pair under settings, which means if you don't want to get notified about the nearby Bluetooth devices, you can turn this off. But unfortunately, the fast pair menu got removed and it didn't make its way back to the final release of Android 13. After that, we got Android 13 beta one and a lot of the features we saw in this build are now missing from the final release. The first one is the ability to start split screen from a notification. All you need to do is to tap and hold on the notification and drag it to the top or the bottom half of the screen while having another app running in the foreground. Number two is the face unlock. In beta one, we saw a reference for the face unlock feature in the settings search results, but unfortunately the menu didn't exist back then. As per 9 to 5 Google, the developers are still working on the feature, but it's expected to work side by side with the under display fingerprint. The expectations here is the face recognition should lower the recognition threshold needed for fingerprint unlock, and in return that should make the unlocking process faster if your pixel rely on an optical sensor. So I'm gonna leave the article link in the description in case you want to know more, but for now let's wait and see what's gonna happen in the future. Another reference in beta one was the ability to lower the screen resolution to full HD plus from quad HD on your Pixel phone, which is something available on Samsung phones for a while, but till now we didn't see it in stock Android 13. Spatial audio is also one of the features we saw its references in beta one, and it's expected to work on the Pixel 6 and the higher models, now the Pixel Buds Pro got released, so I'm expecting this to happen very soon. And finally, in beta one, we got our first look at the new unified system-wide search with the ability to access it from the home screen or app drawer. The search results were a mix between local and web results, but a lot of information was missing back then. Google kept improving the feature and with beta three, we got the ability to search YouTube, Maps, Play Store, and settings using the shortcuts located at the bottom of the list. And also the ability to pin web results to the home screen. But all of a sudden, all these features have been taken off with the final release of Android 13. And we are back again to the same search of Android 12, if not even worse. So these are the 12 missing features from the final release of Android 13, and hopefully we're gonna see them in the future updates. But I also have a wish list that includes five iOS 16 features 
that I think Google should consider in the future to improve the user experience. The first feature that I wish Android 13 had is the iOS 16 lock screen widgets. So when you tap on customize on iOS 16, you can choose between plenty of widgets to add to your lock screen. Yes, we do have the at a glance widget that can allow you to also add some information like the timer and stopwatch to check your doorbell, bedtime, fitness, and so on and so forth. But it doesn't give you the same flexibility or the look of iOS 16 because here you can have different shapes and different sizes and that makes things look better. Also, the at a glance widget of Android can only show one piece of information at a time, but on iOS you can check multiple things. And I think the lock screen widgets will be more useful on Android because we have the always on display, so you can even check this information without the need to touch your phone. The second area that Google needs to focus on is the system-wide search. As you see in iOS, you can search for pretty much everything throughout the OS, starting from the apps, the contacts, the web results. You can also search your settings, you can search your notes, reminders, your photos, and even more at the bottom. But till now, since Google implemented the system-wide search, I didn't see something similar to what I get from iOS. And I expected Google to do better than iOS in this area because they already own the biggest search engine in the world. But, but this is not the case for now. And we still have a better experience on iOS when it comes to the system-wide search. Feature number three is the ability to drag and drop objects from photos without the background. And this is one of the best features I found in iOS 16. And I wish I had the same one in Android 13. Yes, we do have the magic eraser on Pixel devices that can automatically identify the unwanted people and objects and you can remove all of them with the press of a button and adding this feature on top of the magic eraser that will be a welcomed addition and I wish Google will consider this in the future. Feature number four is the ability to scan text using your camera and input your selection directly in the text field without the need to go to a different app. However, in stock Android, when you tap on the camera icon, it will take you to Google Lens to do your text selection first and then return back to your app to paste your selection. So I think iOS implementation is better. Plus on iOS, you can do the same thing in each and every app throughout the OS. But here on stock Android, you can only use Google Lens directly from Google Chrome and you don't have the same option in other apps. Last but not least, I wish we had a widget for Google Home that will allow you to turn your devices on or off directly from the home screen without the need to access your notification shade or quick settings and then tap on a button and then turn off the switch. But if you have a widget right away on your home screen, that will be a great idea. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the missing features and my recommendations for Android 13. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.